Okay guys, here we are, we're back again, and I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new assembly file in this video. And I'm gonna insert the brush handle that I created before I'm calling it AM wake up call. This is the first thing in the morning for me. And I'm gonna insert this into the uh, assembly by just dragging my mouse over this property manager here and saying okay, and it drops it right into place, and now I can look at this, okay. And so uh, in this video, we're gonna do a little bit of top-down modeling. And what that means is we're gonna create a virtual component inside of the world of this assembly. It doesn't actually exist as its own part file. Uh, the way to do that inside of your assembly is to choose a plane, just any plane you wanna work off of, and just choose it. You don't have to start a sketch on it or anything like that. Just select a plane so that the computer has some sort of geometry to wrap its head around. Go up here to insert components and go to new part. You'll see the new part shows up right there. It's called part number nine. You also may notice that there's an F next to that, which means it's fixed in place. Okay, you'll also notice three things to notice here, that it's black, so we need that to be turned blue in order to edit it. So I'm gonna right click, so I just click here in the space and then right click, sorry, right click on the new part that's been created and go edit part. You see that it turns blue, the rest of my model turns ghosted. That means that I'm now editing this part file inside of this assembly. You'll notice now that the tabs that are up here um, on your heads up display are now the tabs that you recognize from a typical part file. So you can go down here and you have the individual planes for a typical part file and you can work right off of them. So I'm gonna go here to my top plane, start up a sketch, and I'm just gonna draw a circle. I'm gonna make sure to draw this circle away from the rest of my model because I have to very carefully um, understand that SolidWorks always wants to add sketch relations between stuff that's touching. See how like when I grab this circle and I drag it over the rest of my model, watch my mouse as it hits the rest of the model. See how it adds that, that coincident relation? See that? So no matter what I pull it over, SolidWorks wants to add a coincident relation. And that would be what they call an external relation where there's a relationship between this part file here and whatever new part file we're building, and that can just get really messy really quick. When I say messy, what I mean is it's really easy to forget if you've added sketch relations from one part file that relate to another one, and then when things don't work later on down the road, you're like, why don't they work? And it could be because there's a secret sneaky uh, sketch relation like that coincident holding it in place and not allowing you to do what you want to do. So. Tough situation to handle if you're in the middle of it, but if you can get ahead of it by just building things separately from each other here in your part or here in your um, assembly, then you avoid it altogether. All right. Okay, cool. So I'm going to approve that right now, and I have to make a quick change here. I have to change the units of my assembly to millimeters, and then I have to go back to my sketch and make sure that this thing is one millimeter and in fact, I remember this hole is one millimeter, so I'm, I think I'm going to make this thing like 0.85. So there's a little bit, of, there's going to be a little bit of a gap between this hole and then this circle. Okay, cool. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and just add an extruded boss base to that bristle. There you go. And then I'm going to exit out of the part file and go back into my assembly. And I'm going to have to float this because it's fixed in space. See, if I click on it and try to move it, it says the selected component is fixed. It cannot be moved. Okay, so we're going to right-click on the part file itself and go to float. And now it can be moved. All right. Now, in class, what I had done, which was wrong, which uh, I'm, I'm making this video to correct it, is I, I had tried to add a mate between the cylindrical body of this bristle and then the cylindrical walls of this hole, and it wasn't working for me. So let's try that again and see it not work. Cylindrical body here, cylindrical face there. And you can see what just happened there. I don't even know what just happened there. It looked like it kind of worked for a second, but I'm not sure. Let's take a look at what happened. Mates, parallel mate. Looks like it's able to add a parallel mate. Ugh, anyway, you know what, delete this. <clears throat> the solution that I discovered for you guys is actually it goes like this, right? There's a 2D sketch that's running this cut extrude down here on this part file, okay? My idea was that this is a 3D form 
and this is a 3D form. And so trying to put a coincident mate between two 3D objects wasn't working for us in class. It looks like it may be working now, which is frustrating. But a quick fix that I found was to put a concentric mate, meaning a circular mate, between this top edge here, because this is just an edge. It's a 2D edge. You can see it here, edge number one of part nine inside assembly number four dash one. And uh, put a, a concentric mate between that and then the, the curve that's driving the other part file. Okay. And you can see that because those are both 2D things, it's very easy for SolidWorks to just line up this circle with that circle, giving you a concentric mate. Okay. Now that this thing's concentric, no matter which way you move it, it's going to go up or down. So you just look at your model from the front view, switch it into wireframe really quick, zoom in, and slide this thing down until it fits right into that hole just the way you want it. Okay, Give yourself a little bit of a gap, but you can get real, real close with it if you want. This is a super tight fit, so let's just call it like that. <coughs> All right, now there's one bristle inside of our brush. Manually placed and all good to go. Next thing we got to do, you remember this one, right? The tongue twister. It's called curve driven component. Oh, wait, wait, no, sorry. Pattern driven component pattern. Ugh. So what does that mean? What it means is there's this pattern that's on this part file. And it's the pattern that duplicates this cut extrude four times on the surface of this part. Okay, so that, that pattern is going to drive this component to pattern along itself like that. Okay, so components to pattern, select the component you want to pattern. The driving feature is going to be this curve-driven pattern on the part file for this brush. So we have to open up our design tree, we have to go to the brush handle, go to the features tab, find the curve pattern, curve pattern 5 is what it's called, and then use that as the driver. Excuse me. Make sure you click that. There you go. Use that as the driver. Okay. So this is what did not work in class. And the reason it didn't work is just because I couldn't get that mate to work, right? So in this video, it's working like a charm. Okay. Perfect. So just like that, there you go. There is your bristles following along with the surface of your brush, and you're all set to go. Okay, from this point on, you can um, do a couple things. You want to do a pattern of these holes that go down the surface of your model. Remember that the cut extrude pattern is part of this part file here, that brush body part file. So if you want to do a pattern of those holes, it's probably best to go back to the part file for the brush and uh, edit that part in context. It'll ask you to save your work. Just say OK. Go back and um, we're going to do a pattern of this pattern on the brush body in order to start ourselves off. So let's do that. So we're going to go um, linear pattern. OK. And it's going to ask us for the first thing is going to be a direction to do the pattern. So we're going to just choose some sort of axis line. I put these axes into my assembly custom you may need to draw your own uh, you can also I think use like the seam of the model as the direction yeah there you, there you go that's working see that arrow telling us we're gonna do a pattern that's gonna go in this direction and then the feature that we want a pattern is actually gonna be this curve driven pattern so uh, let's try that there you go there she is. Now you can see we're overshooting quite a bit. So let's um, adjust the distance between the instances to like two millimeters or four millimeters. There you go. And we are going to call that like that right there. Boom. Okay, cool. So that's a linear pattern of the curve driven pattern within the body or within the part file of the brush body. Got it? This is just the same t tool that we used back at the jewelry project for DC3, so it shouldn't be too hard to use. It's just we're really starting to get into this complication right now where it's like we're inside of an assembly, but we've got part files living inside the assembly, and we need to understand how to jump back and forth inside of parts and outside. 
So now that we've got that pattern running, we can go back, exit out of this part file, go back into our assembly file, and we can do another component pattern because now we have these bristles as components and we want to do a, a pattern driven component pattern again. Okay, so we're going to go to this guy. We're going to go to pattern driven component pattern. The component we'd like to pattern is actually going to be this derived curve pattern. That's this collection of components here. Okay, and we want to use the linear pattern we just created as the driver for these components to pattern. So we're going to have to dig back into our brush file, go down to our linear pattern, and tell this tool that we want this linear pattern to drive all the components to move along. And look at that, it's working like a charm. So that is that just like that. All right. Now in the brush that you know I'm actually building, there's a second layer of bristles that's kind of nested in between these ones, but I'm just giving you guys the simple example. Okay. All right, now that's that. So I'm gonna save my work because this is far enough down the road that I want to do that, okay? But I have a really fun situation here where I can now play around with this a little bit and go into my part file and actually just, I can edit the seed of my um, bristle here. Go into edit part and get right in here to the boss extrude, okay? And I can change this thing around and no matter what I do to it, all the other patterns will update because they're all nested together see so just by changing that original seed I can make adjustments to the entire thing so that's a really fun uh, situation to be in where you can make uh, large edits to many 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 pieces or with only one or two very simple moves so let me just um, do that again to get myself back to where I started I'm going to edit this piece here and we'll go like that and we'll go like this and then why don't we try just before we shut this video down since I'm feeling uh, the momentum here uh, to do a uh, nice little mirror components or yeah let's see here I want to just mirror this across and to be honest with you um, that's going to take a little bit of work because first what I would have to do is mirror the component pattern let's try it let's try it mirror I want to mirror across which plane? My front plane components to mirror is going to be this one and this one. Uh oh, this is going to take a second to figure out. Let's see what happens when I touch this. Oh, it worked. Yeah, look at that, it works. Okay, cool. So I was at least able to mirror one side to the other, but I need, I need to also mirror the, the holes as well. So uh, let's go to, oh, you know what? The holes are part of the brush, brush body, so I need to mirror those um, separately. So I have to go to the brush body. I have to edit the part. I have to open this up, and I'm going to do a, a mirror of this linear pattern of holes right here. So I'm going to go to mirror and I'm going to go to, I'm going to use the plane inside the part body. Use that to mirror features and the feature that I want to mirror is linear pattern. There's the holes mirrored across. Okay. Boom. All right. So that's working like a charm. So I've mirrored the components now and I've mirrored the holes on the part file. So now I'm good to go. The last problem that I have is it looks like this cut that I did at the front of my um, brush body is, is not centered. So I want to go back to my brush body and edit that. And then go to, I think it was surface trim. Yeah, see there's the surface trim. Edit this sketch. All right, and you can see I just drew this curve without any sort of accuracy. So it's obviously just a little screwed up right now. Just gonna get it away from the rest of the bristles. I proved that and it's gonna update a lot of things. You can see rebuilding down here at the bottom. Perfect, okay, there you go. All right, exit out of that part file and now we are good to go. Okay, we're ready to, to start messing around with this, okay? So anyway, this is a long video. 
but we're dealing with a lot of detail here, okay? The concept of editing your part file and then your assembly file and trying to get all this stuff to work is it's it's not easy. And unfortunately in class it didn't work out for us at all. Uh, but hopefully this video can help you get started and uh, get to this point maybe sometime soon, okay? All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next video.